Hello, it's Steve from DudeHack.com and today we're going to be talking about how Tinder works. So chances are you have heard about Tinder since its start in 2012 as it is one of, if not the most popular dating app at this current moment. So essentially what Tinder is in a nutshell is that it's a location-based dating app that requires you to browse through other people's profiles by looking at their pictures and their bio and anything else on their profile and either expressing that you like them or dislike them. You can do this by swiping left or right respectively. Now, if that person has liked you back and it is a mutual like, they've swiped right on you and vice versa, then that will result in something called a match. A match will then allow you to start a conversation with that person or for them to start a conversation with you. On Tinder, it's a little bit different to some other dating apps you might've heard of like Bumble, which does require the lady to go first and start the conversation. On Tinder, anyone can start the conversation and send as many messages as they like. So that's basically in a nutshell how Tinder does work there, but there is a lot more to it. For example, how Tinder's algorithm, messaging, matching, and a few other features do work. We will get to that in a lot more detail soon. Just a bit of housekeeping though, guys. My name is Steve. I am the owner of dudehack.com. And what I probably suggest for a lot of you is if you're not sure if Tinder is the right dating app for you, I do have a free quiz, which will tell you exactly what dating app would suit you better. I'll put a link in the description for that. So go ahead and take the free quiz after this video if you're still not sure if Tinder is the right app for you. But for now, we're here to jump into all the questions that you would ever need to know about Tinder in a deep dive. So let's get into it right now. So today we are going to be covering a lot of things when it comes to Tinder. In fact, everything when it comes to Tinder. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I do like to do a very, very deep dive and cover everything. So strap in tight because this video is probably going to be quite long. But the good news is when you do finish this video, you'll know everything you would ever possibly need to know about Tinder. So first and foremost, how to download Tinder. Well, you're probably wondering if Tinder does cost money. The good news is it is free to download. We will get to the fact that it does have paid memberships. We'll run through those later. But in order to download it, you just have to go over to the App Store if you've got an iPhone or to Google Play if you've got an Android. These days with Tinder, you can get it set up on the desktop as well, which means just on the computer. In order to do that, just go to tinder.com and you can essentially just get that set up on your Chrome browser. All you have to do to get started these days is link either your Facebook or your phone number or both. That will essentially take some information from Facebook or if you've got started with your phone number, you'll have to start from scratch. Just a quick side note here, guys. I even made a video around about three years ago that did say maybe go ahead and delete your Tinder if you do want to increase your ELO score and get more matches. These days, Tinder is cracking down on it a little bit. So if you're somebody who has deleted your account a fair few times, I would advise against doing it anymore. This is essentially because Tinder has just caught on that guys are deleting and reinstalling Tinder over and over and over again. But if your Tinder account did get banned, go on over to dudehack.com and check out my article, which will tell you how to get it back. Next, let's talk about how setting up your profile works on Tinder. Now, building your profile is arguably the most important thing when it does come to Tinder because it's kind of like your first advertisement in the sort of nature of these swiping apps when people may only see a quick flash of your profile before swiping left, it's important to try and make the best first impression possible. So on that note, your first photo is your most important to try to capture their attention as well as your bio. But ultimately your profile is there to give your potential match a snapshot of who you are, show a bit of your personality and hopefully give even a little bit of an icebreaker to start the conversation. Or better yet, your bio makes them laugh. Now, if you're a little bit unsure of what to include in your Tinder bio, I suggest you go and get my free list of 50 best bios in 2021. I've put a link to that in the description as well. In order to edit your profile these days, just click on the little person icon in the top right hand corner of the app. From there, you are just going to click on the little pencil icon that is above your photos. Here is where you can edit your profile. 
Now you can see here on this screen that you can have up to nine photos on Tinder. Uh, like other dating apps where you are required to say put in at least three, Tinder you can even get away with just one photo. Do I advise you do that? No. I do suggest you put in at least four or five photos showing different aspects of your personality, maybe a couple of different group shots and things like that. If you want a bit more of an in-depth guide on how Tinder photos work, go and get my free ebook. Yes, I've decided to make it free. Tinder hat. I'll put a link in the description to that as well. Now below that, you'll see something called photo options where it will list smart photo. Here you can toggle that on or off. Essentially what that is, is allowing you to have Tinder pick your first photo for you according to what they believe people are sort of lingering on the most. So that means what photo users will actually look at the most. Now personally, I don't use this because I question maybe just how good the technology is in picking what the best photo is. I prefer to just sort of, you know, pick a photo once. Maybe if you don't get that many matches from it or it's a little bit lower than sort of last time, then try another one and test it accordingly. The other thing you can do is go to photofeeler.com where strangers will essentially rate which photos you look better in. So I feel that doing something like that is better for you to pick what the best photo would be to put as number one, as opposed to selecting the smart photos option. And going even further on that, the reason I suggest it is smart photos essentially seems to work by the photo that people look at the longest. But what if you had a picture on there that, you know, wasn't your most flattering? And just in my head, I imagine people going to that photo and thinking, hmm, and maybe spending a little bit longer judging, really, because that's what Tinder is all about, whether it's going to be a yes or no. Just because they spent more time looking at that photo, it does not at all mean that it's your best photo. I hope that makes sense. Next, you have your about me, or as I call it pretty much everywhere, your bio. So this is where you can write a little bit about yourself going into as much detail as you want. You have 500 characters to play with here. So it doesn't just have to be a very, very quick sentence about you or anything like that. You can go as in depth or as little as you like. Just another quick tip here, I do advise that you do have a bio. It is reported that you are likely to have three times the amount of matches just by having a bio versus no bio. So that's your first step there, put something in it. Again, if you're unsure, just go get my list of 50 bios while you're thinking of one of your own to come up with. Next, you can select your passions. Here you will select a minimum of three or up to five. These are essentially just like little hobbies or you know your passions, things that you do like and you can have them displayed on your profile. They are relatively new. I have only seen them popping up in maybe the last year or so. And some of the passions you can select are pretty interesting. Now I'm just gonna read you off a few that you can pick because there is a bunch. You can pick anime, blogging, Disney, comedy, soccer, walking, picnicking, conservative politics, wine, camping. There are so many to choose from. And if you're a little bit unsure of what to pick, it seems like they are constantly adding more. So just keep your eyes peeled. And after that, you can put your job title, your company, your education level, and what city you're living in. Next, you can select whether you do want your Instagram photos to be displayed on your profile. Now, how this will essentially look is at the very bottom of your Tinder profile, you will see some of your Instagram photos displayed there. You can display up to a total of 30, but on one screen at any given time, you will see six photos. Now, just a quick side note here, something that absolutely drives me crazy is the amount of people that do use Tinder, Bumble, Hinge to grow their Instagram following. So if you were somebody that does put your Instagram handle in your bio, cut that out right now. You can just display your Instagram photos on your profile instead. Doing it that way means that somebody can't actually click off Tinder to go follow you on Instagram, but it means that you can still display some more photos showing more of your personality and who you are. So if you do want to put your Instagram photos, they're displayed on Tinder. Do not put your Instagram handle in your bio, simply just connect your Instagram to be displayed on the profile, simple. And by the way, if that really annoys you as well, make sure you do watch my video, which will go over a little bit of my rant on why I hate these people. <laughs> Next, you can select your Spotify top artists and your Spotify anthem. 
Spotify Anthem allows you to select one song, which is maybe your favorite song at that point in time. Anyone who's old enough for MySpace would remember your profile song. It was awesome. Same thing on Tinder. Your top artists are a little bit different though. Essentially, that will be auto-populated from Spotify or Tinder or however that works. And sometimes it is a little bit weird. Sometimes I am given artists that I've rarely been listening to, but for the most part, I do think it is a great feature to have some of your favorite artists listed on your profile because it can just be that little icebreaker. And last but not least, you can select your gender and your sexual orientation. These days on Tinder, there are a bunch of different selections that you can choose and you can even opt to have that selection of your sexual orientation listed on your profile. Okay, so that's everything that you would need to know about setting up your profile and how your profile looks. Now let's talk about other profiles. Now these days, in order to scroll through a profile's photos, you will have to tap on either side of the screen. If you do do a swiping motion, that will essentially remember like or dislike them depending on which way you go. A left swipe is a no, a right swipe is a yes. In order to look at their profile in a bit more depth and see their bio and things like that, you will have to click at the bottom of the screen to expand their profile even further. From there, you can scroll down and see everything that they've chosen to display on their profile, whether that's their Instagram, their Spotify and the bio, or whether it's blank, which I'm sure anyone who has been using Tinder for a while has seen before. So on that note, make sure you fill in your profile. Don't make it blank. Next, let's talk about setting your preferences before you get swiping and matching. So preferences are just like sort of setting filters of seeing profiles that do match your criteria of what you're looking for. There are other dating apps out there where you can get really specific with your filters like Hinge, for example. With Tinder, it's pretty straightforward and we're just looking at age and distance. What that means is you can essentially set a window of what you would like your potential match to fit within when it does come to their age and their distance. For example, if you only want to meet somebody who is in their 30s, you can set an age filter of 30 to 40. If you are adamant in finding somebody that's right in your neighborhood and lives close to you, you can set your max distance to say only three miles. It's up to you. Just another quick tip here, guys. I know it kind of defeats the purpose of even having filters or preferences in the first place, but something I personally suggest is not having any filters whatsoever, especially when it comes to age. That's because a lot of people have actually messed up setting their age up on Tinder and therefore their age is showing a lot different to what it actually is. So I've seen people pop up with the age of 110 when they're clearly in their 20s. So I don't like to set any age filters for that specific reason. Okay, so let's get onto the good stuff now. How does swiping actually work? So I just ran through how it works in scrolling through someone's photos by clicking on either left or right hand side of the screen, tapping through to view their photos. But when it comes to actually swiping, to liking somebody, what you have to do is in one motion with your finger is swipe to the right. Now that's probably showing up as a different way on the camera, just make sure you're swiping right. If you're a little bit unsure of the whole swiping thing and you just wanna be sure you, you know, you're a bit clunky with your fingers like I sometimes am, I suggest what you do instead is click on the profile. Remember that's at the bottom of the screen. Click it and it will open up. There you will see either a red cross on the left hand side of the profile or you will see a green love heart. If you do like, then click on the little green love heart. Otherwise you can press the little red X, which is a polite no, a decline. And that's how you essentially swipe these days. Now, just jumping ahead a little bit, if you did have Tinder Gold as well, and you were scrolling through that screen, which showed every profile that does like you already, on that screen, you can like people as well. You can essentially just grab their profile and put it over to the right or swipe it over to the left and that will serve the same as liking them or disliking them. But unfortunately that is only available with Tinder Gold. So as I explained at the top there, the only way for you to really swipe left or right on someone is either by actually swiping on their profile or clicking on their profile and either pressing the green love heart or the red X, simple. 
Now, when it does come to actually matching with somebody, again, just a reminder that that person does have to like you as well. You won't be able to just start a conversation with anybody. It has to be a mutual match. Let's just say you were scrolling through Tinder. You came across a profile that you did like, you gave it a right swipe, and there was a match. From there, what you can do is either send them a direct message, a contact card with either your phone number, Instagram, or any other details, a GIF, or a Spotify song. So there is a few different ways to start the conversation there. Now, just a quick reminder, when you have actually matched with someone that you do have unlimited time to message them. It's not like Bumble where you do have 24 hours and then that match will expire. But with that being said, obviously you don't want too much time to pass before you do say hello to that match because the momentum might drop off. They might have even got off the app and then you're not getting any replies. That's not good. And on the flip side of that, don't send a message to your match every minute on the minute until they actually reply. Send your message and hope for the best. Next, let's get onto how Tinder's algorithm works because this is a little bit interesting, at least in my opinion. Now, when it comes to Tinder's algorithm, the algorithm they use is something called an ELO score. This essentially takes on board a number of different factors to give you a Tinder ranking, essentially, where you sort of stack up against all the other profiles. Now, the reason that Tinder does use an algorithm like this, at least in my opinion, is because it is such a large app with so many different users. It has to figure out a way to basically show you people that are in a similar sort of standing than you. So essentially, it's just responsible for what profiles you are shown to and what profiles are shown to you. So it's really important to try to do everything in your power to make sure that it is at a high level. Now with the Tinder algorithm, the ELO score, I suggest that you don't overthink it too much. What's better in my opinion is just to focus on some of those negative things that can negatively affect your score and just try to avoid them at all costs. These are just some rookie mistakes that a lot of people make and it's really hurting their chances. I'll let you figure out how to do that or I'll make a video because that's a pretty long video in and of itself. Some of the factors that are weighted in your ELO score are the percentage of people who actually reply to your first message, the amount of people that you like and swipe on, the amount of people that will unmatch you, the ELO score of the people who swipe on you, how active you are on Tinder, and whether or not you send a message or not. So just from hearing that, you can imagine if you jumped on Tinder, swiped basically everybody that you ever came across, match with them and didn't send them a message, your ELO score would be going down the toilet. So again, on that notice, you're somebody who has noticed that you are probably getting a few less matches as the time has gone on using Tinder. Your ELO score is probably dropping and I suggest you do get my free ebook Tinder hat that I put down in the description below, which will tell you hopefully how to get that to a pretty good level. Okay, so we've spoken about basically everything you would ever need to know about the free version of Tinder. Yes, there is a paid version, which we will get into now. But just a quick side note, guys, if you are liking this content and has been helpful so far, I'd really appreciate if you did go ahead and like the video and maybe even subscribe. But let's keep moving on. So paid Tinder. How does paying for Tinder actually work? Well, there is three different membership tiers, one being Tinder Plus, one being Tinder Gold, and one being Tinder Platinum. Now, Tinder Plus was Tinder's very, very first paid membership. Remember, Tinder was a free app to start off with, and that opened up quite a few of these features that we do know today. From there, it came out with Tinder Gold, which opened up a couple more, and very, very recent, we have Tinder Platinum. Guys, if you want a bit of an idea of how Tinder Platinum does work, I used it for seven days and tallied up the likes and the matches that I got. So if you wanna watch that video, check it out up there. But for today, let's just run through each of those different tiers and what is included in those memberships and what features you get. And then we'll run through the costs. So when it comes to Tinder Plus, some of the features you get are Rewind, which is essentially allowing you to undo a swipe. If you've accidentally swiped left when you wanted to swipe right, you can click undo and get that profile back. From there, you've got unlimited swipes, which means that you can swipe until you are blue in the face, which means you won't ever see that annoying message popping up anymore saying that you are out of swipes. 
So if you're somebody that runs out of swipes quite a lot, it might be for you. Next, you get five free super likes a day. If you're not sure what a super like is, it's just a little bit of a notch above a normal like, an expression of interest showing that that person is just really your style. And it's a way to stand out from the crowd because you'll have a little blue sort of circle around your profile. On Tinder Plus, you will have five free ones to play with a day, whereas on the free version, you only get one. Next, you get one free boost a month. If you're not sure what boost is, it's essentially a feature that does put you at the top of the swiping card for 30 minutes. What that means is pretty much anyone in your area that does hop on Tinder within that time is gonna be more likely to see your profile essentially meaning more eyes on your profile and hopefully more matches. Next, you've got no ads, which is pretty self-explanatory. No annoying ads will pop up. On top of that, you can hide your distance or hide your age. So basically anybody that is scrolling through and sees your profile will not be able to see how far away from you they are or see your age. Now, I suggest against this. I, it just seems like you have something to hide and I don't think there's any reason why it would be a thing you'd wanna use. And last but not least, you have passport, which means that you can set your location to anywhere else in the world within reason. They have to have Tinder there. Again, probably not North Korea. So what that means is you can be swiping in that location. Now, just a quick caveat, I do believe that right at this point in time of filming that Tinder is actually allowing a month of free passport use. But by the time you view this video, just go and check if Passport is available for free or if it still is part of Tinder Plus. So that's Tinder Plus and all the features that are included within it. Next, let's move on to Tinder Gold. Now, Tinder Gold really comes down to two features. To me, it's really just down to one. Those two features are first and foremost, you have top picks. Now with top picks, this is essentially your top picks that Tinder has determined that you will really like. It's really like a top suggestions for the day type thing. Now you do actually get to view this screen even on the free version of Tinder, but you will only be able to select one person to spend your light on. In order to view any of the other profiles after you have done that, you will have to upgrade. So what Tinder Plus allows you to do is view the eight, nine, 10, however many top picks you have received that day in its entirety. You can like all of them if you want, but in terms of a feature that you're paying the next level for, I don't think top picks is all that special. What you're really paying for with Tinder Gold is the next feature, which is see who likes you. So basically what this means is you can go to this screen, which will show you every single person that has liked you already and either like or dislike them. Where I do believe this is a really powerful feature is remember we're talking about the ELO score. One of those factors which is very heavily weighted when it does come to determining your ELO score is the percentage of people that you like that like you back. Essentially your matching rate. Now, if you were to go on Tinder Gold and for the most part like people that have already liked you, that's essentially giving you a 100% success match rate. So that means your ELO score is going to get driven up by using Tinder Gold. But that is really all that's included in that next tier. Now let's move on to Tinder Platinum. Now Tinder Platinum is a lot more expensive. I was quite surprised when it came out and I kind of think, where can we go from here? but Tinder Platinum was its newest release with a couple more features. Now those features include getting a breakdown of all of your swipes for the last seven days. Secondly, you can send a message before you've actually even liked somebody. Now where I think that would work well is maybe you came across somebody you used to go to school with or you know, really shares a specific unique hobby with you, something like that. Other than that, to be completely honest with you, I think it's a little bit desperate going and spending an extra amount of money just so you can send a message to someone hoping that they will like you back. I don't think it really has any application other than that example I just gave. And lastly, it does report that you will be towards the top of the swiping deck. I do believe they just call it prioritized likes. But as you would have seen in that video, if you watched it where I used Tinder Platinum for seven days, I don't think it's anything that special and it's quite expensive. So. If you're unsure of whether you're gonna spend money on Tinder or not, remember guys, you can just go ahead and take my quiz and that will tell you a better dating app that you can spend money on instead. So now we know about all these different features in Tinder Plus, Tinder Gold and Tinder Platinum, but how much is it going to cost you? 
So when it comes to the costs of these different memberships, it starts to get a little bit complicated only because they always bloody change. It's really annoying to try and run a channel like this and tell you what the price is. For example, a few months ago, I wrote different articles on each one of these different memberships and the pricing was completely different at that point in time. It was only a few months ago. For example, what you could do is select a membership for one month, three months or 12 months. Or you might have seen a variation for one month, six months, or 12 months. What that means is the more months that you went for, the cheaper it was on a per month basis. But it seems like now, when I go to open my Tinder at least, that you can only purchase these different memberships for one month at a time. So instead of making it complicated and giving a bunch of different TAs for different months, Tinder has gone ahead and just sort of standardized the whole thing and given a one month option for Tinder Plus, Tinder Gold or Tinder Platinum. Now with those individual monthly prices, it's a little bit complicated right now to tell you really confidently what it is going to be, especially in the US where most of my viewers are. What I can tell you is what those prices are in Australia and give you a rough conversion of what it might be around the US at the moment. So for Tinder Gold in Australia, we are looking at $30.99, which is an equivalent of around about $24 in US dollars. So for me, for Tinder Gold, we are looking at $43.99. That's in Australian dollars. So a US equivalent, we are looking at roughly about 34 US dollars. And for Tinder Platinum, it is very, very expensive for me here in Australia at 65 Australian dollars. In the US, that is looking at roughly around about 50 bucks. So that is all in US dollars. Remember, that is only for one month membership. But don't hold me to that. The best way for you to go and find out what the prices are in your area at the moment is to download Tinder, get started, go over to the settings page, and you will see the three different memberships listed there. Just click on them and it will tell you what that price is. Just a quick note though, don't click on that price and press OK because it will sign you up. I was very close to accidentally doing that. And just on that note, if you're wondering what I'm using, guys, I'm not paying for Tinder anymore these days. Remember, I do think there are better dating apps out there. So on that note, go and take that quiz down in the description, which will tell you what dating app is better. Now that is the majority of what you would ever need to know about how Tinder does work. I feel like we've covered basically everything there, but there are still a couple of little things to go through. For example, a feature that has popped up in the last few years is video chat. I believe Tinder has brought this out as a little bit more of a safety measure, if anything. So that allows you to just have a video chat with one of your users. You do have to say that you are open to have this sort of chat. You will see on the screen right now that you do have to slide this little toggle to show you are interested and hopefully if you're interested in that your match does say they're interested as well and you can have a video chat pretty straightforward a few other things that i wanted to touch on is that you don't have to actually upgrade to tinder plus or any of the paid memberships if you do want to go ahead and purchase extra super likes or extra boosts yourself now, I personally think Boost is one of the best features when it does come to Tinder. So maybe you just want to use that and not opt for the monthly price. Another thing you might want to hear about is Tinder Vibes. You might be wondering what that's all about. Instead of going into a lot of detail on what that is about, I will list a video that I created on that subject specifically. So if that interests you, you you've seen Tinder Vibes popping up, you're wondering what it's all about, go and watch that video now. And last but not least, Tinder has put a lot more focus recently on security and privacy and safety. So if that's something that is quite important to you, I guess you can take a bit of a breath of fresh air that Tinder is doing this now and putting a bit more focus on it, but it's still not perfect. There are going to be some catfish and some fake profiles and whatnot. That is something that's just prevalent on really all online dating apps these days. And because Tinder is very, very popular, because there isn't a massive barrier of entry to get started, i.e. it's free and anyone can jump on, you can imagine there are going to be some people who aren't taking things seriously or even worse, are catfish or bots. Now, if you do come across one of these profiles that you feel is either trying to scam you, is a catfish or is a bot or anything like that, just scroll to the bottom of their profile and you will see something saying report 
user. Now this will allow you to report them. They'll give you a number of selections on what the reason is that you're reporting them. But the good news is Tinder does have measures in place to ensure that people are at least feeling a little bit more safe. So that is basically it. That covers pretty much everything you would ever need to know about Tinder. There's bound to be maybe a couple of little things here and there that I may have skimmed over or missed. What I suggest is go over to my channel and check out all of my videos on Tinder because I answer little questions like that all the time. On top of that, if at this point, after going through all this information, you're still not entirely sure that Tinder is the right dating app for you, remember, I've got a quiz which will tell you exactly what dating app would suit you better. I do think there's better dating apps for basically everybody better than Tinder. So go and take that free quiz now so you can find out what dating app would suit you, your personality, your goals, pretty much better than any other one out there. And if this video has helped out at all, I know it was a long one, but if you did sort of find the answer that you were seeking or anything like that, or you've just been entertained, I'd really appreciate if you did go and press the thumbs up button. It really does make like a huge difference to the channel. And if you subscribed as well, that would just make my day. But until next time, guys, stay safe, be well, and I'll see you later.